I am a writer, blogger, and vlogger as well as a YouTube personality here in Houston, Texas in the United States. And I'm at KCOM this year. This is my second time attending as a special guest uh, panel moderator as well as my first time as an MC. So it's a very diverse experience this time. Okay, so what do you specialize in and what's kind of the focus of what you blog about or blog or um, just the general focus of what you do? The main focus is predominantly how the U Entertainment, specifically the K-pop side of it. Although I do watch dramas, I am a little bit more well-versed in being able to communicate about the music. I do MV reactions, which can be fairly comedic, and I write for a lot of online journalistic approaches in terms of giving detailed information about what's going on overseas in the industry, or the general opinions of the international family. So what kind of panels have you had this year at Con and like, What's the response being? How is the audience in this general it's definitely been different from what it was last year. This year I have had one about cultural clashes and that had a little bit to do with cultural appropriation, understanding what it means to have a cultural fetish and things of that sort, as well as today's actual panel is about the K-pop fans who are 30 and up in age. So that's a very different fan dynamic. In terms of the workshops that I did, those were mainly games oriented to see just how much knowledge people have about K-pop in general as well as K-dramas and Korean culture. The target audience for these things has predominantly been between 16 and 25 with the exception of today's panel obviously it's for people 30 years and older. Well, they're already in the here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want to interview some of them. There has been quite an age range. I see really young kids here. I'm yes. also seeing like the older, more mature, and then the more, more, more mature, <laughs> like gray hair basically walking around. Yeah. So, what do you think today's panel is going to be like? Or why do you think they came here? I think today's panel is definitely going to be the most diverse one I've had because there hasn't been a voice or anything that's acknowledged them at these conventions or on a public scale ever. And I believe the audience is going to be predominantly female, of course, and I think that's a draw because of the dramas. The males who will be here do watch the dramas as well, but I believe there's a little bit of a taboo, a little bit of a stigma for male K-pop fans because it can come off for American citizens as perverse, and I don't think that's quite the case. So it'll be interesting to see who's here. <laughs> you have a con change. Like you've been as a special guest here twice, but you've been here longer as sort of like somebody participating. How have you seen a change from your first year to this year? Has it gotten better, more confusing? Are there more interesting songs? <laughs> it's a little bit of both, honestly. Um, this is a four year old institution, if you will, of entertainment. I've done it for three years. My first year, I was still wet behind the ears. I was just excited to be here and to see the people and be amongst the community. Uh, in terms of being on the other end of it, yeah. seeing how it's changed, it's definitely being more and more fine-tuned as we go. But anything this large scale, it's going to continue to evolve, and people are going to try to find different ways to make it as organized as possible. So there's still some little hiccups here and there that I'm confident they'll improve on over time. So I've sat in on a couple of your um, panels, and I think it's quite interesting to have a discussion about things that happen in K-pop. Like you had the culture passions, and that's one of those. And I think it's definitely something that is needed in the K-pop industry or how it has become more global. Like people need to talk about it, open up the discussion about this. So what do you think? Um, like from your from your standpoint, what do you think? Like a couple of things. 
just a few moments, uh, but definitely believe one of the biggest things is just learning the differences between the cultures. I'm American. I know American culture, but I am learning about Korean culture and how it infuses itself in the entertainment and the way that things are done in terms of dress and just interaction in general. So if more people embrace the fact that you're learning and it's not a space for you to impose your cultural and ethical entitlements and or beliefs, then I think people will be a little bit more open to learning more and embracing it a little bit better. Also, obviously, because of yesterday's panel, cultural appropriation is a very colorful, no pun intended, colorful arena for people to learn more, uh, understand what the definition means, understand the different subtext of what that entails, and just asking more questions and getting more answers from the sources and not just from general around the way information. I'm looking forward to the panel today. Thank you. The first audience here. So thank you very much, Michelle, for speaking to me later. Absolutely. Anything you want to say to your fans in Korea or uh, shout out to your K pop group, Dr. Ray Got Seven? <laughs> yeah, I'm widely known as a God Seven, and I got seven, but uh, to the fans in Korea, oh my gosh. Uh, um, oh, I'm so grateful that you even <laughs> remotely listen to anything I do. That's all I think I can say. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll leave you to go with the Thank you so much. <laughs>